You're living in sin. It's not my job to be like, hey, God's going to do everything you've ever prayed for. Of course, people pay money to hear that. They love to hear that stuff. That's why John didn't charge, because that's not what he did. And Jesus said he was the greatest man born of a woman. Is that wild? John performs no signs, no wonders, no miracles, says, hey, everyone, you're sinning. Repent and be baptized. And then when people would ask him, what should we do? He would say things like this. If you have food, give it to one who has none. If you have two coats, share it. He had a lot to say about possessions and money and repenting from sin. And then he told the king, hey, you're in an adulterous marriage. And they beheaded him. No wonder these false fortune tellers just tell you nice things. Because prophets in the Bible got sawn in half. Don't be deceived. And they have not exposed your iniquity so as to restore you from captivity, but they have seen for you false and misleading oracles. An oracle would be a word from God. Where's, where's Jim Dean in the crowd? Jim Dean raises his hand because he signed the registration form. I'm, I'm right here. I'm Jim Dean. Jim Dean, you're 23 years old, right? Ha, I am. Ha, oh, Jim Dean, you have a wife and two kids. I do and they're here with you. And your wife's name is Susan. Susan, stand up. Ha, I'm here. Jim and, Jim and Susan, we're here and we have two kids. Jim and Susan, God's gonna take you on an adventure unlike anything you've ever seen before. You're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. Everything you've ever dreamed. And if it's not from God, the Bible calls it a false oracle. I'm not saying that can't happen. I'm just saying that's all that ever happens at these meetings. Where's the exposure of sin? Here's how you know a real prophet. You're really dealing with a prophet. You sinned, and it's a secret sin. And only you and God know you sinned. And maybe one other person if it was sexual or whatever. And the prophet calls that out. Or you've been having some sort of wicked thought process about somebody. Peter said to Simon the sorcerer, I see that you're full of bitterness and captive to sin. He called exactly what was going on inside of his heart. These are the works of prophets in the Bible. Not false oracles that sound wonderful. You go, oh, well, that's the old covenant. Surely in the new covenant, all prophets do is bless people. Okay. But Let's see. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 24 and 25. But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he is convicted by all. He is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. Did Paul just say that when prophecy is happening, that a person will be convicted, that the secrets of their hearts will be exposed, and that they will fall before God in repentance because of the situation? That sounds a lot different from the fortune tellers who claim to be prophets. The prophets bring people to salvation by exposing their sin when they walk into the church. They expose your secret sin. They do not fortune tell. Someone is not serving God if you have active sins in your life and they just affirm you. You know what the very first word preached after baptism is out of the mouth of Jesus? Repent, for the kingdom of God has come near.